So I'm the Upstate Dog Guy, and I've been reflecting back on Luna, who was our Shih Tzu Poodle Mix, and that we just finished doing our follow-up sessions with. Our program is always going to include some follow-up sessions because it's important that we teach you how to work with your dog the same way that we've been working with the dog. That way, everybody's speaking the same language. Primarily what I remember with Luna was that she was really highly aroused. So even as we were teaching her for dog kibble to sit and whatnot, she did a lot of what we call happy feet. Just danced all over with her feet, had a hard time sitting still, was ready to break that pose instantly. So you gotta work on distance, duration, and distraction in your dog training. And to work on that duration with her, we needed to kinda get those happy feet and get her focus on the handler under check a little bit. Uh, so what we did, we just added some props, you know, add some tools to your dog training. Slip lines, uh, e-collars, dog treats, leashes, these are all tools. For this tool, what we did is I got a big bucket, you know, it's like a, a rubber bucket that's a water pail for cows or horses. My big dogs, we teach them to get up on it with their front feet and get that back end, get that hind end awareness moving. So with Luna, we didn't need that. She was way too small to do that on it, but we could get her up on top of it and get her sitting. And because she fit on this really nicely, we were able to eliminate those happy feet, get her to focus, to hold that pose on the handler, wait for her reward, and then once we got rid of the bucket, we were starting to see the same behavior with her on the regular ground. So we're shaping a lot of behaviors, not a lot of correcting with Luna. Luna didn't need a lot of correcting. She didn't really have negative behaviors. So we just started concentrating on getting obedience and getting her to learn how to focus on the handler. As she did that, we introduced the down, we introduced the place, we started bringing in the arousal, we started bringing in the distractions. We found out that she loves a flirt stick. We taught her how to use a flirt stick. It's another great one for impulse control with your dog. <laughs> another challenge with the small dogs is that they're my seven-year-old daughter's favorite. So we got to incorporate her into the work, and that's great for the dog and learn how to socialize with kids. And it's great for me teaching my daughter how to focus because we're kind of working on those same levels of arousal. But anyway, we wrapped up in Pet Supplies Plus with her last week, had other dogs and other distractions. And after we had spent the time teaching her mom and dad, uh, the people who own her, how to communicate with her the same way that we were, we were seeing the same success with them. Now, the cool thing about that is she's young. She's just over a year. They stay consistent and they continue to practice. And you see these things become a pattern that gets repeated. And you have what we call a custom-made companion. I'm the Upstate Dog Guy. This is the Upstate Dog Academy. We want to work with you and your dog. We want to find where your dog and your personality and your lifestyle and where that fits. Teach your dog how to communicate and show you how to shape behaviors to make your custom-made companion. You guys have a great day. Whatever treats you guys are using, she thinks are awesome. Yeah. We're five feet away and she's like, man, D, I don't even care about Nugget. Nugget, what do you think? How'd she do? She do good? Boy.